In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up and create your very first Redshift material. I'm going to use Metallic Roughness Workflow that closely matches to what happens inside Unreal Engine 4. And I like using this method as it resembles pretty much what I would do in UE4. Now, the results are not going to be the same, of course, because it's different render. But in terms of how the albedo works, how the roughness works, and how Metallic Property works, it's very similar. So first I'm going to show you how to set up a non-metallic surface, a non-metallic material. So something you would use for concrete, brick, wood, plastic, anything that's non-metallic. And then I'm going to show you how to do this with a metallic type of surface. Gold, copper, chrome, and so on. Now in this tutorial I'm only going to show you what the default values that come with the material. So solid colors and changing the values from 0 to 1 and anything in between. So I'm not going to use any textures, no albedo, no normal map, no roughness texture, just what comes with the material to keep things simple. And then in another tutorial, I'll begin to include and connect texture maps. So this way you know how to do this without any textures, and then you're able to do this with textures a lot easier. So what I have here is a basic scene. I have a ground plane, a couple of planes that I will apply material onto, one vertical, one horizontal for different angles, and two spheres. So I can just see a material on different types of geometry. And then I also have a redshift dome light. This dome light has an HDR map that is going to be used for lighting. And if I do a quick render right now, All right, so let's go ahead and set up our material. Open up Hypershade. And if you're using a Redshift render, you should be using Redshift materials. The one material that will do pretty much everything you ever need is your standard Redshift material. So you should not be using any other material other than the Redshift ones that comes with the render. So to get access to them, just simply left click on the Redshift on the text to get access to everything you need for the Redshift render and all the materials, including some lights. And the one you want to use for most of your standard material types is this Redshift material. So go ahead and left click to create one. And if you have any other graphs in here, any other nodes, you could clear everything that's in here already. So you might have had Lambert selected and you would have seen the graph. You could clear your graph editor and then simply re-graph re your current material that you're going to be working with. So just you would simply right click on the material and graph network to regraph it. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this really quick. I'm going to select this main node, come over here into the property editor and give it a name. Now I usually leave the RS prefix in order to find that it is a redshift material. So let's give it a name and name it non-metallic. You can name it anything you want. And I guess I should have named mine something else because I will show you how to make this material metallic. So the first thing I do for every single material I create, with the exception of glass, and I'll go into that a little later in another tutorial, I change on the reflection my BRDF, which is a reflection model. I change it from Beckman, which is an older reflection model, to the newer version of reflection, which is GGX. This just simply gives you a better result than the previous one. And then I also change the Fresnel type from IOR, which is Index of Refraction, and I change it to Metalness. By doing this, this is what gives you a very close workflow to what UE4 does. So as soon as you enable this and change the Fresnel type, it gives you the property to adjust your metallic surfaces. So this is, uh, we're going to go into this a little later, but this is where you would change 0 for non-metallic or 1 for metallic. And this is the switch that you would use. So these two properties I always change pretty much for every material I create. And again, with the exception of the glass. So the color property right here, that's your default color. It's going to give you this medium gray. So let me go ahead and just apply this redshift material to all these objects. I'm going to select them all. Then right click, hold, and then assign existing material. And assign this redshift non-metallic. And let's render. Let me zoom in a little bit and render my current frame. Now it's going to be a little harder to see because some of the roughness properties are better looked at when you are viewing it at a certain angle when the light hits it just right. So I'm going to go ahead and enable IPR so I can see it in real time. And let me just adjust my view so I can see what it looks like at an angle. 
Now, based on the direction of the sun, some of these properties are going to get blown out. So this uh, plane is getting really too bright. But I still have my spheres and other objects that I can take a look at what it does. So in the moment right now, all I have is a gray color and my roughness value, which can be controlled from 0 to 1 by changing the roughness. So if I go back into Hypershade, select my Redshift Material Main node, and I can adjust my roughness value from 0 to 1. Now, value of 0 is very shiny, and value of 1 is very dull, very rough. So basically, roughness controls how much light is being absorbed into the surface and how much is being reflected back. So by changing this anywhere from 0 to 1, this will give you a various ranges of how shiny or how dull, how rough the material is going to be. So let me change it to 1. And actually what I'm going to do is, so I can see my render view, I'm going to shut this down. And I'm going to go into the attribute editor and adjust it here. It's going to be just easier for me to see instead of having the hypershade open. So to get access to this, just simply select any object that you have that material applied onto. Then go to the attribute editor find that material tab, and then come down on the reflection, roughness, and adjust this value. Now it's very important that you change this roughness value, how shiny or how rough the material is going to be, under the reflection tab. Because pretty much everyone will have a roughness value to be adjusted. And the one we want to adjust is under reflection, not under diffuse, and not under any other value, any other tab. So make sure you're under reflection, and then change the roughness Let's change it to 1. From 0 to 1, 1 will make it very dull. And 0 will make it very shiny. And anything in between is going to give you various ranges of how shiny or how dull that is, that material is. So if I type in 0.5, this will be somewhere halfway. And all I, just need, all I need to do is just find a right angle to look at my object so I can see how light is being ref, uh, reflected and how much light is being absorbed. There you go. It's a little easier to see on the sphere. So that's your basic setup. So by changing the, uh, the roughness value, this will adjust your material property to match something that's in the real world. So for example, concrete is usually 0 0.9, 0 0.95. Wood is somewhere around the same values. Some types of plastic might be around 0 0.2, maybe 0 0.3. Now, of course, you would usually have a texture that you would connect on here, and I will show you how to do that. But as far as the basic setup goes, that's all you really need. And here I can even adjust the color to uh, something else, just a solid color. And let me go back to roughness and let me adjust it maybe to do uh, 0.7. Now, if you wanted to turn this material into a metallic material, so for things like chrome, gold, copper, or any other type of metal, the only value you need to change is metalness. So again, this will be found under reflection, under the same property where you are adjusting roughness. And it's going to be right here. It's important that you change the Fresnel type to metalness in order to get access to this. So 0 is not metallic and the value of 1 is metallic. So as soon as I change this to 1, this will turn the surface into metallic and maybe I can come back in and adjust my roughness. Let's say 2.25 or something like that. You can see that it's now taken on the properties of a metal. Now let me change my color. Let's say I want to do something like copper. So let me find that value. That's a little bit more orange. And now I have my metallic surface just from using the redshift material without any textures. So when you use metallic property, it's either zero or one. It's not anywhere in between. And when you use your roughness, you can use any range from zero to one and anything in between. So this is a very important distinction between two properties to adjust. You basically decide is it metal or not, zero or one, and then you adjust the roughness based on the type of surface that object is. And of course, for all these three properties, for your color, for your roughness, and for your metallic, you could plug in a texture map. So instead of using whole values and solid colors that Maya or Redshift material gives you, you plug in your own texture maps. And we'll cover that in another tutorial. But without any textures, you can begin to set up your own Redshift materials with just solid colors and the value to change for roughness and metallic.